Hundreds of Columbia students back here at home now rallying in defense of free speech of the disruptive protesters who shouted down a conservative lecturer earlier this month. Listen. Well, they're even starting a petition, you can see that right here, to push the school's administration, demanding the school not punish the protesters. And joining me now is someone who helped set up that event, a correspondent for Campus Reform and president of Columbia University College Republicans, Aristotle Busalas. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. So you um, helped organize this event. Yeah. Tell us what was supposed to happen and what went on. So we originally hosted this event. We invited him. But we have to first recognize that this speaker does not represent our club. Mm -hmm. But we want to have a discussion of ideas. I think that's what really college is about, of having this discussion and debating these ideas, because they're really prevalent in our society, and that's what college, that's why I came to Columbia. But the, the protesters didn't like who the speaker was yes, and what um, he had to say. Yes, so what they did is they ran down the stage and about 30 of them interrupted him for like 15 minutes straight. Not only did they interrupt him, they also pulled the plug of the Ethernet cord, disconnecting the whole talk. Mm -hmm. They basically broke the rules of conduct that was stated in the Columbia University's policies, which the administration has now taken action of them, as you've seen today. So the, here's what they had to say um, in terms of why they did this. They said, by attempting to silence the protesters while providing space and funds for hate speech at Columbia, uh, Suzanne Goldberg, other university administrators are demonstrating complicity with violent ideologues. The student protesters were providing a model of informed political engagement to us all. So f first, I would uh, cl clarify this. They don't label anyone who we bring as a far, as a far right, right nationalist or white supremacist. We must go beyond these labels and talk about the real issues and the real problems that we're facing. And I think that's more important. These people don't want to have a conversation, and we didn't silence them. They broke the rules, and mm -hmm. they must face those consequences based on what the university yeah, has. Yeah, you didn't silence them. They silenced you. Exactly. That's so it's what a little mixed up there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in terms of the school itself and what's happening in universities all across the country, we keep hearing stories about this where they want to talk about free speech, but only for one side. So it's not really free speech. It's very hypocritical. We must protect freedom of speech for both sides. In order to have a conversation, both sides must be at the table. But if one side is not willing to allow the other one to speak, mm -hmm. then we have a problem here. And that's not what college is supposed to be. It's supposed to have different groups come together and talk about it and learn about each other in order to have a conversation. Right. Uh, you know. Being with the College of Republicans there, are, are you afraid for yourself or your friends or other people that are in the group? So recently, Antifa placed posters of my face and a lot of my other members across Columbia's campus. We're not only being targeted and intimidated, these people are going farther than that. They Antifa. Might even, Antifa. Okay. They, they might even commit violence against us. And it, so it's, it's important to realize that these people will attack anyone who disagree with them. And we must real, and people must know that college is becoming a place not of just ideas, it's becoming a place of violence. And people have to be serious about this. This is not just real life. This yeah. is affecting my livelihood and the livelihoods of my friends. The, the uh, posters that they put up with your face on them, what were they calling for people to do they to said, you? Yeah, so they said to come up and do, they, they didn't really say if they were going to attack me. And that's the scary part. It was unknown. Someone could come up and berate me, or someone could come up and hit me with a water bottle, for mm -hmm. all I know. The crazy thing is that these people are willing to go to that far and not willing to have a conversation. Why come to Columbia University if you're not going to have a conversation? Why pay $60,000? You might as well stay yeah. at home and live in your own echo chamber. Well, we appreciate you standing up uh, for what you believe in and for what many others believe in. So hopefully we can get back to free speech for all sides, like you said. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me.